So, recently I got myself this. And I guess that means it's time to talk about the Comsat Angels. Yes, the Comsat Angels. The band that is quite good. And somehow they're so underrated. And I wonder why. I mean, they started quite decently. They made like three albums on one label. And uh, after that, at the end of that, for whatever reason, they started selling less and they were dropped. I think they were still technically successful, but not successful enough for the label. Then they got picked up by another label that kind of s basically made them be more mainstream a little bit. Not really. I mean, their album Land is quite good, even though there there's some drum machines that don't need to be there. And the first track is a bit cheesy, but it's mostly a great album. After that, um, Seven Day Weekend, um, a bit worse than that, than that, but still had some decent tracks. And for ironically enough, I'm falling from Seven Day Weekend, their most sellout mainstream. <laughs> pop kind of sort of label uh, album is their most famous song somehow but whatever they then got lucky with their next album Chasing Shadows and then changed their name for whatever reason became Dream Command released Fire on the Moon then all of a sudden came back in the 90s with full force released My Mind's Eye then they lost the bassist, they get a new one, they get a second guitarist, they released probably their most impressive album to date, The Glamour, which was then re-released eventually as a two-disc album. And then they call it quits. Ironically enough, the singer left the band partially because his wife became pregnant, so he decided to find a more stable day job. Or maybe the music was his second job, whatever. Uh, but as... Um, yeah, he also was kind of disappointed that the band wasn't getting recognition. But just as he left the band, the internet started to take off. And word of mouth spread around quite fast that Comset Angels are a band that exists. And they're awesome. Here, take a listen. And in the late 90s, they the knowledge of the band started to spread. And if only the man stayed as the vocalist for a few more years, maybe they would finally get their recognition. And then they didn't. And in 2006, 2007, their entire catalog, well, most of them, most of it, was rescued by a, a label called Renaissant Records. Not Renaissance. Renaissance, whatever that means, um, a British record label that was pretty much entirely focused on releasing um, underground, rare, uh, unknown um, acts, albums, reissuing them. So, yeah, Comes at Angels were rescued by that label, and then, like, Three years later, the label died. Oops. And now, half of their albums were rescued again by a different label. In my opinion, they didn't do a perfect job uh, with the remastering. I, I'm not sure if they remastered it at all. Maybe they just... Well, they, well, it sounds like they kind of cranked up the volume, compressed the audio just a bit. I mean, if that's the first time you're hearing the albums, they will sound great, but um, the 2007 remasters, just a bit better. Anyway, so this whole rambling video is really about the band not getting recognition. I don't know why. Um, the 80s, for like two years, they were kind of famous, then they fell off the radar. They got taken by a a more pop label they didn't work out in the 90s they came back but still the success eluded them 
until they broke up and finally they got success but that may meant nothing and in the middle of the 2000s the label that rescued their catalog died are they cursed are comset angels cursed to perpetually remain an underground barely known band or is it perhaps finally time for them to be more known, more successful? Is it finally time for all of their albums to be reissued? We will never know until we get there. <laughs>